The Calgary Flames officially have nothing left to play for in terms of just the standings. And I think we can all agree that this season has been one big disappointment. But not all is doom and gloom, as there still are certain things left to play for as the Flames wind down the 2023-24 NHL season. Welcome to Flames Digest, I'm Mark Griffith. If you're new around here and you love the Flames, make sure you subscribe because right around 82% of the people watching are not subscribed. So if you want to stay up to date on all the latest news, updates, reports, and rumors, then make sure you join the fastest growing community of Flames fans on the internet. We would love to welcome you to the Flames Digest family. And just for the people that were wondering, over the past few days I have been battling a bit of a cold. That's why there hasn't been a video uploaded for pretty much this whole week. But we are back, ready to make a ton of of videos as we wind down the season and get into sort of the draft lottery swing of things. But with this season in particular, the Flames, well, it's official. They have been eliminated from playoff contention. It kind of seemed like they were unofficially eliminated pretty much right around the trade deadline. But why is this a big disappointment? A lot of people saw this coming. We knew they were going to get eliminated from playoff contention early this season, not play meaningful hockey late into April or past that. But it's a big disappointment because it's three out of four seasons now that the Flames have not made the playoffs when they have had some very strong rosters. You think of the 2020-2021 season, the Flames really could have made the playoffs that season. That's when it was just the Canada division um, and they had a good chance. I mean, obviously we saw a team from that division go all the way to the cup final somehow, but um, it's a disappointment. Last year, the Flames were oh so close. They finished with more points than the, than the eventual Eastern Conference champion, Florida Panthers, couldn't quite do it. And this year, going into this season, they had a good roster. They had, you know, a plethora of players that could have wanted to stay here, but none of them ended up staying. And that's why it is a big disappointment that the Flames are officially eliminated. There's the graphic from NHL discussion. Eliminated with a period. That makes it so so serious. All caps with a period at the end. Ouch, that hurts. Flames, they are done for the season. Um, and now, you know, Team Tank, I guess you can say, have won this round. Um, they, you know, the Flames pretty much from here on out. Losing does benefit them the most, but at the same time, everyone wants to see their team win and keep competing as the season does wind down. But the Flames have been mathematically eliminated from the playoffs and will retain their first round selection in the 2024 NHL draft. Since they cannot draft 20th to 32nd this year, Montreal won't have the option to take their pick. So the Flames officially have their first round pick. Um, and like I said, you know, the more they lose, the better their draft lottery odds are to get that number one overall pick. But at this point, there's a bunch of teams around the same amount of points. It's around the same amount of percentage. And I know the losses do help. And a lot of people will be saying that as the season does wind down. But no matter what, we can chalk it up as a big disappointment. And just with the thumbnail as well, there might be a video on this later today, if not definitely tomorrow. But Martin Pospisil, once again, throwing the body around in a way he should not be. Elbow to the head of Josh Morrissey in yesterday's game against Winnipeg. And it looks like he could face even more discipline as he was just recently suspended not too long ago. So that's another big disappointment for the Flames. A lot of disappointments going around. But, I mean, c'est la vie, I guess. Um, so the rest of the season, let's, let's have a little outlook on the rest of the season. Because there are still seven games to play, and it could be meaningful hockey for a bunch of players, especially the young guys. Now let's see what Huska had to say. So our expectation for what our guys bring to the table will not change, Huska told reporters in Winnipeg postgame. Of course he's referring to now that the Flames are out of playoff contention. And since the last uh, video on the channel, the Flames have played twice, they lost to Anaheim at the Dome, very disappointing, and then lost to Winnipeg last night, of course. We've been walking a tightrope for a while here now. I think the most important message we've had for them and will continue to have for them is, is it's always about how you play. It's always about leaving the rink when you're done, making sure you put your best effort forward because that's what people remember at the end of the day, including your teammates. So there's a lot of guys here who you know, need to leave a very good impression. Some of these younger guys that are going to be coming into play or have been playing um, to make a huge, huge, just a difference, I suppose, but obviously to make sure that guys notice them and are happy with them. Like a Matt Coronado, this is prime time for him to kind of pad the stats and show that he really is NHL ready and an NHL caliber player. Pelche could get a chance to come back up. Dustin Wolf obviously needs to get some starts. Connor Zary was scratched. 
Um, and he, you know, really needs to show what he's capable of as it's been a little shaky lately for him and just some of the younger guys as well. I know the Wranglers have the Calder Cup playoffs coming up and they'll want some of those guys, which is absolutely fair, but these guys also need to be playing at the NHL and leave their mark on the Flames as an organization. But now there are no excuses for what they do going forward. The final seven games will be a critical test for those trying to make an impression that lasts through the summer and into next season's training camp. So that pretty much echoes exactly what was just said. You know, these guys need to leave an impression, need to leave their mark, and really play some solid hockey here and prove their worth. But what's interesting about that, what kind of contradicts it, I just slightly mentioned it, but interesting decision to healthy scratch Connor Zeri tonight. I mean, it was last night now. He's not playing in Winnipeg, but not for injury reasons. On the other, now's the time to play your young players. And of course, on the one hand, Zeri has struggled as of late. But on the other, it's time to play those young guys. So extremely interesting decision by if it was Huska, or maybe it was people higher up, some of the management wanting to scratch him. I'd assume it was a coaching decision, coaching group decision. Um, but very interesting that Zeri, you know, kind of got cut last night. He has been one of the best rookies in the entire NHL this season. He has been one of the best Flames players, if not the very best Flame this season. Obviously, he has gone through some injury issues, which has, you know, kind of deflated his stats, I suppose we can say. But he's been sensational. And to get cut, I know he hasn't been producing a ton of points lately, ever since the line change, ever since he wasn't on the line with Kadri and um, Pospisil anymore, the Kuzmenko replaced him, and that line has been doing really, really well. But Zeri obviously has been left as the odd man out. So it's interesting that he got cut and doesn't get to play. So hopefully for the rest of the games, this was just for a wake-up call to show, you know what, we're not always going to need you. You need to prove your worth. And that's exactly what Zeri and a bunch of these other young guys need to do to wrap up this season and show how good they are and leave their impression on the Flames as an organization. Now, moving on, it is not all doom and gloom. There is some good news. We love to stay optimistic here on Flames Digest and always look at the future, which is fantastic. We hope Conroy has done all the right stuff and the Flames are building a good future, a good rebuild, and next season, you know, could be very, <laughs> very prosperous in, in a way. But no, hopefully they'll still be rebuilding kind of thing and making sure that the future does look as bright as possible. But there are other ways to get good news, and there's something from right now um, in this, you know, disappointing, big disappointment of a season. And it is that Oliver Shillington is a Bill Masterton Trophy nominee. Now, this doesn't come as a huge surprise as anyone who goes out of the lineup for a major long uh, period of time and then comes back will probably get a nod for it. And Shillington deserves it 100%. The Masterton Trophy, you know. It's, it's for perseverance mostly, you know, obviously there's other criteria, but perseverance, and that is exactly what Shillington has shown through his mental health episode. Obviously he's doing better now, which is fantastic. That matters so much to take care of your mental health. And Shillington, of course, was able to overcome that and work with the Flames as an organization and get what needed to be done, done. That comes before hockey, that comes before just your professional career in general, and that goes for anyone. So it's great that he got nominated um, and uh, getting recognized for truly persevering and making it back to the NHL. Hats off to him. Couldn't be happier for him. All Flames fans love when he is back on the ice and when he's scoring goals, of course. Um, so it is great that he is getting recognized for that. Congratulations, Oliver Shillington. We do hope you win that trophy. But either way, we're more happy that you were able to overcome your mental health issues. Now, let's finish off with the comment of the day. Now, obviously, there haven't been videos for the last few days, so I had to go back to one of the previous videos. Um, and it kind of goes along with, I think, what a lot of Flames fans' mindsets are as the Flames do wrap up this big disappointment of a season. And it comes from Shane Jones. I'm not per se on the Team Tank bus, but the more balls we get in the hopper, the better. Couldn't put it better, you know? Not everyone wants to see the Flames lose every single night, but they do realize that losing at this point in the season kind of is what is best for the Flames. And it sucks. It sucks watching the Flames lose, especially when they get, you know, destroyed by teams they shouldn't be, as we've seen them lose to, you know, San Jose recently. Well, that's 
probably over a month ago now, but Anaheim the other day, Winnipeg last night kind of thing, where the Flames are just giving up a lot of goals, and it does kind of stink, but it does help them in the long run. The Flames don't have playoffs this year, and nothing brings more dopamine, gets those endorphins going, than playoff hockey, especially your team scoring in overtime. We know what that's like, throwback to 2022, but none this year. So, how are we going to get our dopamine now? Well, it'll probably be on draw draft lottery night that's our playoffs um so team tank has won this round which isn't fantastic i hope the flames do still win some games and play some good hockey to end off the season but it is better to get more balls in that hopper couldn't have put it better myself thank you so much for watching this video if you like what you saw here today make sure you subscribe and have a wonderful start to your weekend